This week on the show, we have content creator and TikTok star Bailey Spin. With over 554 million likes on TikTok, she's using her platform to inspire. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show's all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that we all have an inner superhero within us. Due to contrary belief, a superhero is not the generic image we see on TV with a person possessing superhuman strength and magical powers. A true superhero is the everyday person who tries their best each and every single day and shines their talents, kindness and uniqueness into the world. Many times we look at the media and look at celebrities and put them on a pedestal because of their status and achievements. But what if I told you that you too have an inner superhero within just waiting to be released? Your superhero could be many things. Maybe it's your amazing ability to connect with others through your words, kindness, and just have the ability to walk into a room and light it up because of your larger than life energy. Your superhero could also be your willingness to help and encourage others, whether it's being a great friend, listener, partner, or parent. We all have our unique superhero power within us that makes us special and valuable in our own unique way. As Jason Reynolds quotes, having a superhero has nothing to do with the ability to fly or jump or superhuman strength. The truest superpowers are the ones we all possess, willpower, integrity, and most importantly, courage. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. Hmm, and how did you come up with this? Was this just something randomly you thought about one day? How did you come up with your content? <laughs> I saw one girl doing it on my For You page oh. very early on in TikTok. We were all out of school because of quarantine. I was one of those seniors who didn't get a prom or graduation because of COVID. And I was spending basically all of my time on my phone. I mean, you couldn't go anywhere except walk around your neighborhood. So I saw this girl making a POV on my For You page and I thought it was really funny. And I was like, you know what? I have nothing else to do today. Let's just do this and see what happens. And I made the one video and it just absolutely went insane from there. I kept doing it every single day after, not really thinking anything of it, but it was very fun at the time and it kept me occupied. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have TikTok star and content creator, Bailey Spin. With over 554 million likes, Bailey is using her platform to voice important topics like being an advocate for suicide prevention, as well as working with the National Eating Disorder Association to help further their mission. Bailey, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am doing amazing. I was just telling you that I just wrapped up the Toronto International Film Festival, so it's been a very busy couple of days, but I'm here. I'm really excited to talk to you. We have a lot to talk about, uh, but before we get into everything, I want to ask you, why did you decide to become a content creator? Why was this something you wanted to pursue? I always really looked up to YouTubers when I was like 14, 15. I remember making little hauls of like Kohl's clothing, all my back to school essentials. I'd make these YouTube videos and no one would even really see them. But it was just something I always wanted to do because I felt like I had so much personality and that I could be so good at it. But I never really knew how and I couldn't find a way to make it happen for myself until TikTok came out and that's when everything kind of started to skyrocket for me. Mm, very nice and for our viewers that aren't familiar with your content tell us about it. So I make these short form skit videos called POVs. Um, it's basically a little acting skit for 60 seconds except I play all the characters which is kind of funny. I have a man voice that I do to depict <laughs> when I'm talking to someone else and try to differentiate the parts so you don't think I'm talking to myself. Mm -hmm. um, it can be about basically anything I want it to be about. It could be about soulmates, romance, schools. I've done ones with challenges like you to complete a dare. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> hmm. And how did you come up with this? Was this just something randomly you thought about one day? How did you come up with your content? <laughs> 
I saw one girl doing it on my For You page oh. very early on in TikTok. We were all out of school because of quarantine. I was one of those seniors who didn't get a prom or graduation because of COVID. And I was spending basically all of my time on my phone. I mean, you couldn't go anywhere except walk around your neighborhood. So I saw this girl making a POV on my For You page and I thought it was really funny. And I was like, you know what? I have nothing else to do today. Let's just do this and see what happens. And I made the one video and it just absolutely went insane from there. I kept doing it every single day after, not really thinking anything of it, but it was very fun at the time and it kept me occupied. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think that's really inspirational in itself that, you know, you didn't have a prom because of COVID, but you've turned that, you know, negative experience into something positive by, you know, creating your channel and you know putting your focus on something else rather than the negative and not having a problem and having that experience so i like that you did that i think that's uh really interesting <laughs> thank you yeah it really helped me to kind of get out of the funk that i was in because we really didn't get anything and i just got my year cut short and was sitting in my room and i was like man what am i supposed to do with my time right now <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And you've garnered over 554 million likes on TikTok. So how long did it, uh, how long did it take for you to actually see your channel grow? I started growing pretty quickly off the bat and it was very small growth at first. I remember I was so excited to hit 10K and it was after like one video and the growth kind of did not stop from there. I didn't expect it to get to the point that it did, but Slowly, I started gaining more and more, and I kept pushing out videos, which was helping. And I went to like 200K, and then I was at 500K, and then I remember hitting a million specifically was so exciting for me, and I never had seen that many people like wanting to see what I did. And I just remember sitting there, refreshing my phone, waiting for the M to come up, come up, because it was really exciting to see, you know, 1.0 million, mm -hmm. but. The growth came pretty quickly because I was very persistent that I want to keep making these videos. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the big question I'm sure that all of our viewers want to know is how do you monetize your page? Because I mean, there are so many content creators out there that, you know, obviously want to monetize it. So how did you do so? So what I do on TikTok kind of doesn't bring in many brand deals. Brands are mostly looking for people who are doing makeup or skincare, or people who can organically use their product and show that they like it and it makes sense for their page. So at first I really wasn't making much money, if any, off of it. I did these things called sound deals where they would pay me to act to their music and just make a little skit out of it. And that was how I made money at first. And then once I was old enough, for the creator fund, I actually was old enough, but they didn't let me on it. Um, I joined it and then the creator fund really on TikTok doesn't make you much. It's like $2 <laughs> for a viral video. Yeah. So most of my traction now comes from brand deals. And once I started to integrate different kinds of content and making you know beauty videos and hair and fashion, they started to notice me and saying, hey, maybe we should you know give it to this girl because I had the following and I had other videos now that they could see. And I make a lot more off of other platforms rather than TikTok, to be quite honest. Yeah, I like that you said that too. Like you, you did it for the passion first and then obviously brand deals and all that stuff come, but you did it first <laughs> to put content out there and you continued with it. And of course the brand deals eventually come in. So I think that's important for our viewers that want to make money off social media. It takes a bit of time, right? You have to first focus on your content and the money will come after that, right? So I like yeah. that you said that. Um, a fun fact about you, I know that you were a competitive swimmer for 12 years. I'm not sure if, <laughs> sure if anyone knows that. So, so what did that era teach you about yourself? Swimming competitively was definitely a challenge. It was something I kind of started doing as a kid and it helped me to keep persisting because I was not that great at swimming, to be honest. <laughs> for a long time, I was not very good at it, but it was a lot of hard work and discipline. I feel like people kind of neglect how hard it is to be a swimmer. You have to have endurance and strength. And I'd wake up, you know, at six in the morning and go and swim and just run around the pool. But it was a very difficult time. And I'm glad that I did it because it did teach me a lot about discipline and keeping myself going, even if I didn't want to. There were moments where I didn't want to do it and I didn't want to go to practice, but I did it anyway. And then I was so grateful that I went and I, that I enjoyed the practice and I made a lot of friends out of it. 
And I think doing a sport when you're young can really teach you a lot about life, even if it seems silly at the time. It was something very great for me. Yeah, absolutely. Discipline and focus. I mean, those are the traits that you need for anything to be successful in anything in life, whether that's a content creator, whether that's anything you're pursuing. So I like that and that you kind of that kind of um, created the foundation for you to even do what you're doing today. Right. And, you know, have yeah. the discipline to put out content, even if you don't want to. Right. Because there are days that not everybody wants. So it's not that easy of a job. Right. It's not. I feel like a lot of people look at content creators and they think, wow, your life, you know, it's just a breeze and all you have to do is sit there behind your camera and just post whatever you want. But there's some days where I wake up and, you know, I'm just not in a good mood or I'm sick and sitting in front of these lights is very harsh on your eyes. I get migraines all of the time because of it and trying to come up with new content every single day that nobody else has done is really draining sometimes and I have to have brainstorm sessions. And I have to really think about what I'm putting out there because you can't just put anything out there. You know, I don't want to disappoint my followers and I feel a lot of pressure from them just to do what they like. And I don't want to upset anyone. But some days I'm really like, I can't do this. And it's OK. I've learned to take breaks if I'm not feeling it one day. You know, it's OK to just sit in my bed and like watch Netflix instead. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm a content creator as well. I do a lot of brand deals, so I can completely relate. There are days that, you know, sometimes you don't want to be on. You don't want to take pictures. You don't want to create content. And um, you have to push yourself to keep doing so. So I think that it's definitely uh, requires a lot of focus, discipline. And of course, finding brand deals aren't that easy either. People think that it just falls in your lap, but it is a grind and does take a lot of effort and time to obviously, you know, build relationships and, um, you know, for, and build uh, relationships with brands, you know, for them to continue to work with you. So I can completely relate to that. Um, you know, every single person out there, every Gen Z wants to be a content creator, whether that's putting content on Snapchat or Instagram or TikTok. So what advice would you have for someone that wants to build their channel or they're doing so and not seeing results? You really have to be able to keep pushing even through those days where you look at a video and you say, man, this didn't perform how I would have liked it to perform or your videos aren't getting as much traction as you would like. You have to continue posting and pushing. There were moments during my career where I was gaining absolutely no traction. In fact, I was losing followers for doing the exact same thing. I hadn't changed anything. But the thing is, sometimes you need to change what you're doing and you have to adapt to the platform. And that's what I've done. You have to be able to look at the trends and see what's going on, what's popular, and just keep persisting with your content. But um, you have to stay within your niche to an extent. You can venture out of your niche, but if you are posting very consistent videos and it is clear that you have a theme to your videos, it's gonna attract a lot more viewers and they're gonna wanna stick around for more if you're showing you know, how to contour your face or what your favorite kinds of shoes are, or how to create an outfit. People are gonna stick around a lot more than than if you're just posting whatever content you kind of come up with day to day. And if it has nothing to do with each other, they're probably less likely to stick around because they're like, what is the interest in this page? You have to be able to give your followers something to learn from and something to grow from. And it, you making consistent content also helps them to understand what you like and what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I like that you said stay in your niche. I think that's important because sometimes on social media, it's so easy to look at what other people are doing and even maybe feel discouraged if their page is more than yours or they have bigger followers or they're getting more engagement. Sometimes it's just better to stay in your niche, be authentic to yourself. And that way your page will grow authentically, right? You're not trying to be anyone else. You're just being yourself. So yeah. I think that's uh, also important. And I like that you're using your platform for change. I know that you support suicide prevention um, and their, their initiative. So tell us why that's a cause that's important to you. So I went through a lot of bullying in high school and it got to the point where it was very severe and I was kind of being publicly harassed. And I just remember feeling so low and not knowing really where to go or what to do. And people were so mean to the point where I felt worthless and like I had kind of nothing, even though it wasn't true. And my sister also has struggled with a lot of suicidal thoughts and a lot of, you know, just all of that kind of stuff. And seeing her go through that as well made me realize that I never ever want someone else to feel that way. And a lot of people don't see when their friends or family members are not doing well. And all it takes sometimes is just asking them how they're doing, 
or keeping an eye on them. But it's extremely important to me because I do not ever want to hear one of those stories of somebody lost their life on their own accord because they just didn't feel like they were good enough because there is always something else for you in life. I was struggling so much when I was a kid and I really didn't know what I was going to do as a career or where I was going to go. I didn't enjoy really anything I was learning in school and nothing was of interest to me. I just didn't know where to go from here. And I ended up here, you know, I just moved into a town home by myself at 20 and I get to do what I love full time. So even sometimes when it seems like there is no going up, there is an up. You just have to keep persisting and keep trying to do what you like and find the little things day to day that make you happy, whether it be eating a cookie or going for a run, just anything to uplift yourself as much as you can day to day. Cause I know how difficult it is to be struggling with those thoughts. And I advise everyone to seek help if they feel as if they need it. I know it's difficult to seek help, but even telling a trusted family member or a trusted friend can really help and they will understand what you're going through. At least I hope so and try to help you. Yeah, I, I appreciate you sharing that because I think that it's a, that's such an important topic, uh, mental health, all of these things, because, you know, bullying comes in very different forms. Um, it can come like even with social media. Now someone can put a comment and it can ruin your day or, you know, there's so many. It's not just physical. It's also over the Internet. And so I want to ask you, what's something that you do to preserve your mental health and, you know, to make you feel good? Because I think that's really important is having healthy habits and working on your personal development, right? Because your mindset really dictates your life. So what's something that you do to work on your personal development? So with the TikTok side, I try not to look at hate comments. I mean, sometimes they disappear in your feed and you can't really help it. But whenever I see them, I just have to remind myself that this is a random person who specifically took the time out of their day to leave something mean on your page while you are out there putting yourself out there and being brave and posting what you like and doing what you love. So in the end, you're still winning compared to them. All they're doing is being negative. And I always try to remind myself of that. And I also love to put time into my hobbies. I love singing and playing the guitar. So if I'm ever having a bad day or my mental health is feeling low, I love to take out my guitar and just start playing whatever comes to mind or making up music, writing down lyrics and kind of taking it as inspiration instead of feeling down about it because that's what I used to do. And I think um, pushing it onto something else really can help you to make like your day better. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I always like to end the show on a positive note because um, I created this platform to inspire and to uplift and just to make people's lives better, you know, by sharing information and that, you know, or just tips that every, we all go through this. So for someone watching this, maybe going through a hard time, not feeling good, not feeling motivated, what would you say to encourage and uplift them? You are absolutely worth it. Even if you may not feel like it or you're looking in the mirror and you don't like what you see, I can promise you that you are beautiful and you deserve everything and it will come to you. You just have to keep being yourself. Don't listen to what other people say because in the end, you are your own person and you can do whatever you like and whatever makes you happy. And that's what you always should do. Other people who are hating on you or making you feel down about your mental health are not worth your time because they're filled with negativity and they're just pessimists. But if you fight that back with positivity and keep doing what you love, eventually you will end up getting to the point where you're super happy day to day and just finding little things when you're not having the best mental health day. Like if you want a cookie, eat a cookie. <laughs> if you want to go work out to get some endorphins, Go do that. If you like music or playing the guitar like I do, that can help a lot too. It's just little things day to day can really change. Even if you don't think that they're going to do anything, just participating in those small activities can make your day so much better. And if you're not feeling something one day, don't force yourself to do something that you don't want to do. It's not going to help. And it's just not a good idea for your mental health. If you are not feeling it, go take a break, take a walk, have some water enjoy your pets or do anything else than force yourself to do an activity that you're not there for absolutely yeah taking breaks is such an important thing because i feel sometimes you know 
our lifestyles go 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 and sometimes we don't take time to focus on how we're feeling or our mental health and just doing something as you said that makes you feel good whether that's working out maybe reading a book whatever it is that little break really recharges you and makes you feel good again so i like that you share that uh bailey what else are you working on right now what are your current projects I'm currently working on original music, which is very exciting for me. I've always been very obsessed with Broadway music, and that's how I started to love singing as a kid. So I've been in the studio creating some of my own original music. I just went to New York Fashion Week, which was super fun. Nice. I'm about to go to Palm Springs for a YouTube event as well. So I have a lot to look forward to, and hopefully I'm going to be releasing some original music beginning of 2023. We're looking at an album, not Ooh. first, but uh, some singles first, and I'm going to keep doing all my little YouTube covers because I love it so much and it's my passion. So I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> Very nice. Can we hear a sample of your music? <laughs> I would, although my computer died yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> hey, Bailey, thank you so much for being on the show today. Congratulations on all your success. Uh, this was a really inspirational uh, interview and I'm sure a lot of people are going to take away um, some great points from that. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, you can fly higher than the sky.